Good evening, everyone. And so the 26th of January is actually, the 26th of January, 806, is actually the establishment of Tendai Shu in Japan. And so we celebrate the establishment of Tendai Shu every year. But rather than talk just about Tendai Shu, I thought it would be a good opportunity to talk about Indon Show because it's a, a really important, well, well, we'll talk about that in a moment, but it's, it's a um, important work that is recited virtually daily by um, monks in Japan, monks and nuns in Japan, although we seldom really give it the attention it's due in the West. Um, the Endon show, show is found in the introduction of the Mo Chi Kwan by Chinese great master Shramana Chi Gi in the sixth century. He was the principal founder of Tiantai Buddhism. He was the third or fourth patriarch, depending upon how you're counting. And the introduction itself was written by Quan Ting. And a little bit of background on the Makashikan, <coughs> which Makashikan is the Japanese pronunciation of the Mochikwan in Chinese. It's referred to in Japanese as a major Buddhist doctrinal treatise based on lectures given by the Chinese patriarch Ji Gi, whose dates are 538 to 597. And in, he gave these lectures in 594. The lectures were compiled and edited by Ji Gi's disciple Quan Ding, 561 to 632, into seven chapters and ten fascicles. And Quan Ting provided an introduction to Ji Gi's opus. And the Endo Show is a paragraph in that introduction. In 845, the Tang Dynasty Emperor Wu Zong ordered all foreign re religions in China, which included Buddhism, to be eliminated. Not an inconsequential move, by the way. And the Guanding Temple, which is the main Tiantai Temple at the time, was destroyed along with its li library and manuscripts, and the monks were scattered. However, Tiantai did not become extinct in China in time. With the help of Korean disciple, Quan King was rebuilt and copies of the essential texts, including the Mo Chi Quan, were returned to the mountain. This may seem relatively minor. The profundity of the teaching, teaching taken from Chi Yi should not be underestimated. These 270 words in English uh, and about 140 kanji characters in Japanese are revered in Chinese Tiantai and Japanese Tendai and is recited from memory daily among monks and nuns. Donner writes that it is the core statement of the Mo Chi Quan, its distilled essence. There are numerous commentaries written about it and commentaries written about the commentaries. So I don't know <laughs> too many works that have as much written about the Hindun show as there, as there are. There's enormous, uh, not in English, in, in, in Japanese, Chinese, Korean, etc. Much like the Heart Sutra, each time it's read and recited, it reveals something new. I, I have to tell you, you know, I recite the Heart Sutra virtually every day, and, and I've been doing that for how many years? You know, 50 years or more. And I have to say that, that after having done it for 50 years, I'll still be reciting it, and I'll say to myself, why didn't I ever see that before? <laughs> it's, it's, it's like there's something brand new that never up here just pops up, you know? Um, and so, it, and that's what it's like with the Undone Show also. So, the way that I've broken out this evening's presentation is into segments for the purpose of the presentation is just one of the many ways that one can reduce the segments for discussion. Um, uh, and also, you should be aware that the translation that you have in the handout is not the translation I use in the presentation. And I did this specifically to confuse everyone. You know, <laughs> the, reason, the reason I did that is because the one that is um, in the handout is one that's more easily recited. Uh, the one that is in the um, presentation is more explanatory. So that's why, that's why there's a difference. Yes. Is this paragraph that's in English it. and this in Japanese the same thing? That's the same thing. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Much prettier in Japanese. But and 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 the, so the reason I provided the the copy in English 
that you've got is that it is more readable if you're going to recite it. So if a person wanted to recite it, you should recite this. This is from Donner and Stevenson, who did a work on uh, Chigi back in, oh, it was published in 1993. The version that I'm using for the presentation is from Swanson's Clear Serenity and, and Quiet Insight, Tiantai, Chigi's Moa uh that was published in 2018. That's the one we do for the tutorial. Um, that's the, the work that we do. And that's in, that's in three volumes. Um, and uh, But just so that you're aware, so obviously for this evening's presentation, I use the Donners and Stevenson um, material and the footnotes, which are, are essential, as well as the Swanson, all three books in the Swanson um, version of that. I also use Swanson's um, Tian Tai philosophy, the flower of the two truth theory in Chinese Buddhism. And um, also I have to, to credit Ichishima Sensei with the conversations that we'd had um, starting 30 year, over 30 years ago um, about um, the Endon show. Um, so you'll, no, you'll note a difference between the translation on the handout and the translation of the presentation. Um, the, and by the way, the, the version that I read is a more literal version from Japanese. It's a, uh, a version translation that Ishishima Sensei provided, and it's a more literal version. And that one is closer to the Romaji that you'll find in the, on the sheet if you were to, to recite that. But it, it doesn't have the same amount of explanatory information that the other two translations have. That's the difference. And I thought it might be interesting if you look at the handout, and we're actually going to chant this before I start with the rest of the presentation. Mm -hmm. So let's just start. Um, you know what? Um, you get, yeah. You know where they are, the small ones? You know where they are? Yeah, I think so. Study. Hold on just a moment. So, why don't we begin? <laughs> Endo show. Endo show. Upper uh, and studying, counting and contemplation from the very beginning takes ultimate reality as its object. No matter what the object of contemplation might be, it is seen to be identical to the middle. There is nothing that is not true reality when one fixes the mind on the dharma not to as object and unifies one's mindfulness with the dharma not to as it is then there is not a single sight nor smell that is not the middle way the same goes for the realm of self the realm of buddha and the realm of living beings all there is no suffering to be cast away since the symptoms of ourselves are identical with enlightenment. There is no origin of suffering to be eradicated since the two extreme views are the middle way and false views are the right way. There is no have to be cultivated since samsara is identical with nirvana. There is no cessation to be achieved because of the intrinsic in existence of suffering and its origin. The mundane does not exist because of the in existence of the path and its cessation. The supra Funding does not exist. A single unalloyed reality is all there is. No entities, whatever exists outside of it. Then all entities are by nature. We essence is called coming. The we essence is nature is ever luminous. Is called contemplation. The a verbal distinction is made between earlier and later stages of 
practice, there is no ultimate duality, no distinction between them. This is what is called the perfect and sudden coming and contemplation. Like, it's a lot of words. Now we don't have to actually have a discussion because you recited it and you just inherently got it. Yes. Yeah. Is that for us? Pardon Where me? It summarizes for us. That's what I'm going to do. <laughs> <laughs> this is a summary, by the way. This is the summary. This is the summary. Okay. Can you summarize the summary? summary? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Next, please. <clears throat> so, the, the, in the preface, So I wanted to just let people know that um, the anniversary of the Tendai schools established in Japan is the 26th of January, 806. <coughs> and this is an observance of the anniversary. And I thought it'd be nice to have everyone recite this since it really does play such a, a pivotal role in Tendai practices. Um, and we already went over, over much of this. So next, please. We start with reality. By the way, I thought the picture is a really good rendition <laughs> of what we perceive there to be a reality. And what we have to do is sort of lift the lift the shade to see what is the true nature of reality. Um, that's what that, I found that picture. I thought that's perfect. <laughs> uh, so the perfect and sudden method of practicing cessation and contemplation involves taking the true aspect of reality as a subject from the very beginning. The Mo Chi Kuan is explicitly about shamatha and vipassana meditation. However, it is an opus of Tiantai teaching in and of itself. That is the Mo Chi Kuan. Keep in mind that the four types of meditation are sitting only, walking only, both sitting and walking, neither sitting nor walking. So when we talk about um, shamatha and vipassana, we also have to keep in mind that each is done during all four of these times. And when we talk about neither sitting nor walking meditation, what we're really talking about is what people think of as mindfulness in a vernacular sense. That's, that's what it's referring to. In other words, how do you live your life with Buddhist, with being embedded in Buddhist thoughts? That's really what Shmirti is talking about. That's a translation of mindfulness um, from Sanskrit. How do you live your life on a daily basis? I.e., you come across someone who is belligerent, you know, in a parking lot because they almost ran into you, or you almost ran into them, and they're belligerent. Do you use your Buddhist teachings to approach that person as meditation off the cushion, or do you just respond similarly in a belligerent fashion? Do you use skillful means to use your teachings about um, how to conduct oneself, and right speech and right action and, and those things? Or do you just say, I'm going to slug this guy? <laughs> I mean, those are the, the, that's what we're talking about. That's the kind of distinction. And from the very beginning uh, is a statement, not of chronology. It's not saying that this that the, involves a true aspect of reality as the object from the beginning of time or something like that. I, I don't want people to misinterpret that. It's the importance of the method as reality as it really is. It's so it's not when it's the beginning. We think of the beginning in a chronologic context, um, but it's not that chronologic context. The nature reality is a major theme in both Mo Chi Kwan as well as in the end on show, as you'll see in a few moments. <clears throat> The middle, whatever is made of to be the object of contemplation, it is the middle. There is nothing that is not truly real. This refers to whatever phenomena or experiential conditions one confronts or generates, it is understood as realms of discernment. The object refers to that of perception. So when we are living our, our lives on a daily basis, we're filled with all kinds of perceptions. We look out at the world. I mean, you know, I was sitting at the 
the kitchen table having lunch this afternoon and I was looking out into the backyard and it was snowing and I was looking at the trees. I was looking at the, the squirrels that were coming to the feeder. I was looking at the birds that were coming to the feeders. And I realized that my reality was sitting in the kitchen beside a nice cozy wood stove while the snow was coming down and the birds and the squirrels were out there feeding. Um, their reality and my reality are not the same reality. <laughs> it's a very different sort of perception. And but, and here's the point, the middle means that the, the reality that I'm experiencing as a mundane reality, the provisional reality of this moment, this time. And then there's a reality which is free of those constraints of my perceptions. There is an ultimate reality. It's not a scientific reality because a scientific reality is still based upon perception. It's not a platonic reality. That's a reality based upon mathematics. It's a reality which is beyond that of our senses. And so that's what this is, is speaking to. So terms such as truly real, the middle way, Dharma Dhatu, Buddhist nature, suchness, subtle, etc., are Chi'i's expressions for the way that things really are. Not the way that we perceive them, the way they really are. And not the way that I think they should be. I mean, often our perception of reality is, this is reality. It's what I think it is. That guy over there, whoo, boy, he's way out on a limb. He has no context, right? That's often our, our perception of things. Nope. So, was the reality the sum of all realities together? I'm not going to answer that. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, that doesn't mean merely that things are what they appear to be. That can be deceptive. Gigi points out that words and concepts are never completely valid. Mm -hmm. That's one of the issues. Mm -hmm. And that's what it's saying here. Whatever is made to be the object of contemplation, it is the middle. There is nothing that is not truly real. So everything has a reality. It's just whatever that reality is may not be what we perceive it to be because our perception is by its very nature changing what the reality is. It makes me think of the, um, what was the experiment that changed that? The double slit experiment? Yeah, um, that was, that, was that Schrodinger? Mm, no. No. Um, Anyway, yeah. um, I'm thinking Heisenberg, yeah. right? Yeah. Heisenberg principle. Yeah. Thank you. Um, the the idea that that once you are perceiving whatever it is, the absolute reality has already escaped, and so it's it's interesting that that we we find that the physics is sort of affirming <laughs> that that idea in its own way. However, as Swanson points out. As Chigi spell, and this is a quote, as Chigi spells out more clearly later, there is no phenomena or object that does not participate in reality. So it's not to say that there is no reality. There is a reality. There's no object that does not participate in it. And those objects can still be useful objects for contemplation. So sometimes we can look at and say, so everything is relative. That's not what this is saying at all. It's saying that there is a there is an absolute reality. It's just that our perception of it um, changes. It changes by moment to moment as we live our lives. Excellent. And by the way, I love that Ikebana. That's just that to me that represents the middle. <clears throat> so Dharma Datu, when you attain the state of contemplation, wherein reality itself. Dharma Dhatu is fixed as the object of contemplation, and thoughts are integrated with reality itself, then you realize that there is not a single color or scent that is not the middle way. Donner references Chan Ran, also written as Chan Jan, uh, 711 to 782, numerous times in clarifying the text. So I'm going to provide a little bit of information here because I'll be making references to Chan Ran. Uh, necessarily, although I don't always uh, credit him because I don't want to make this sound too didactic. 
Uh, John Ron is the ninth patriarch of the Tian Tai school in China, and he studied Tian Tai meditation doctrine be beginning as a teenager, but did not enter the monastic order until the age of 38. So he was really rather uh, old by the time he entered the monastic order. Typically, people enter the monastic order from the age of 10 to 21 or something like that. He was well known as a meditation teacher and also expanded Tian Tai doctrine. He's the, he's the person that really uh, promoted the view that even non-sentient objects such as trees and stones have mm -hmm. Buddha nature. He's the, the person that's responsible for that. Back to the text. The line originates, the line that we just looked at, originates with the Wen Shu Chou Qing one of the two sutras on Manjushri's constantly sitting practice. And John Ron says, mindfulness itself is the constant illumination that attends the mind in quiescence. A fixing is the constant quiescence that attends the illumination of a unified mindfulness. Since subjective and objective aspects are one, how much more so calming and contemplation, so how much more so calming and contemplation, unquote. Chan John goes on to say, calming and contemplation are not two separate things. Wisdom and object it perceives are a mysterious unity. Subjective contemplator and object contemplation are spoken of together in order to clarify the quality of quiescent illumination. Let me just re recite, yeah, yeah, yeah. And repeat that. <laughs> um, calming and contemplation are not two separate things. So we're talking about shamatha and vipassana. Wisdom and the object of it perceives are a mysterious unity. Subjective, contemplator, and object, contemplation, are spoken of together in order to clarify the quality of quiescent illumination. So the Buddhist teachings explain the middle in several ways. The first is the middle between two extreme points of view. And the second is the middle way of the Buddha nature, that is the one on one side, the provisional, the expedient, and the other is the real, the absolute. Thus, there is the concept of the Buddha nature as a unity between the provisional and the absolute. So think of the Buddha nature as that as that middle way. What does yes it mean? Well, yes, it means to to uh, be still, to be um um, to uh, be in a state of serenity. In bliss. Bliss. It could be bliss. Yeah. Next, please. <clears throat> the three dharmas. It is the same for the realm of the individual, the realm of the Buddhas, and the world at large. All phenomena experienced through the aggregates, the skanda, and senses, ayatana, are thusness. Therefore, there is no substantial suffering that needs to be removed. The three dharmas are found in the Avatamsaka Sutra. Uh, it references the personal mind, which is the imperfect self, the sentient being, the objective world, and the Buddha, the perfect self, perfected self, or the ideal goal. Within the Endon Show, a discussion of the Four Noble Truths from the perspective of the sudden calming and contemplation begins here. So, in the Endo show itself, now we end up in a discussion on the Four Noble Truths. Uh, within the Endo Endo show, a discussion of the Four Noble Truths from the perspective of, of the sudden and calming, we, we see the skandhas, which are, of course, form, which is rupa, sensation, vedana, perception, samina, mental formation, samskara, and consciousness, vishnaya. Vishnana, I should say. No substantial suffering is a denial of the substantialist interpretation of the first noble truth. The first noble truth is that dukkha, that of dukkha, that of, of discontentedness, suffering, etc. A quick note about substantialist doctrine. It's a reality that the substantialist would, would maintain that there's a reality that, unif that underlies all phenomena. So that a substantialist notion of the self is introduced in the Upanishads, which, in which they speak about Atman. In other words, this asserts an underlying eternal self, which is rejected from a Buddhist perspective, which affirms an Atman or not self. 
So this the substantialist doctrine, this first section, and this is what uh, Swanson would maintain, this first section starts off on looking at the Four Noble Truths. The first noble truth is that of Dukkha. In the Upanishads, in the Hindu perspective, when they say life is suffering, they mean it's a constant round of suffering. Why is it a constant round of suffering? Because, and, and you'll see this as it develops, because from the Hindu perspective, this lifetime exists and you're suffering, you're reborn. Depending upon what you did in this lifetime, you may be reborn better, you may be reborn worse in, into a different caste. Are you gonna be in a Kashri caste, the, the warrior caste, the ruling caste? Are you going to be the Dalit, the untouchable caste, as an example? And so this suffering goes on and on and on and on until finally there is unity with Vishnu, which would put an end to it. But that notion perceives an eternal self. And that was really one of the, the key areas where Buddhism broke away from, from the, the Vedic texts. Vedic texts maintain Atman, which is an eternal self, that the self of John will be that same self in the next lifetime. The self that is John in this lifetime, there's never going to be another John. What is reborn are the karmic uh, tendencies, the karmic waves that the person produced within this lifetime, but what's reborn the John is not reborn. That's the distinct difference. And that's the difference between Atman and An-Atman. An before a term in Sanskrit means the opposite of whatever, whatever the term is. And so um, we see that the Skanda, what, by the way, when we start the Lotus, when we start the Heart Sutra, we start Avokisavara Bodhisattva doing deep Prajna Paramet Paramita, clearly saw emptiness of all five conditions. That's what they're talking about. Those are the five skanda. You know, again, those are form, sensation, perception, mental formation, and consciousness. So, um, this, the three dharmas, by the way, found in the Avantamsaka Sutra, um, are really relevant to this, and because you can see how there's a development within this end on show that is not necessary. No, oh, wow, this is one really long. <laughs> I better hurry up. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Next. <laughs> we won't watch it. Oh, yeah, yeah, awesome. awesome. anyway. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Samata. Since ignorance, abhidaya, and the exhaustion, the exhausting dust of passion, affliction, the clashes are indivisible from Bodhi wisdom, there is no origin of suffering, that is to say, craving, to be severed. Since the extreme dualities and false views are indivisible from the middle way and what is right, there is no path to be cultivated. This is calming, concentration, stopping, serenity, shamata, that is to say, is calming, concentration, stopping, and serenity. No origin to be suffered is a denial of the substantialist interpretation of the second noble truth, that all suffering has its origins in our unwholesome desires. Mm -hmm. Extreme dualities and false views refers to extremes, such as the extremes of hedonism and extreme asceticism. No path to be cultivated is a denial of the substantialist interpretation of the fourth noble truth, that there is a way to extinguish the unwholesome desires that cause suffering. So in this, we have several different ideas that are brought up through samatha meditation. That is to say, the calming, concentration, stopping, and serenity. And Shigi tied it into two of the Four Noble Truths. Next, please. I can get going on this stuff, and so I gotta watch, I gotta watch the comments. <laughs> it's great, it's good. There. <laughs> Even the watch is yelling. Even yeah. the watch is yelling. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Samsara is indivisible from Nirvana. This, since the cyclic world of samsara is indivisible from Nirvana, there is no extinguishing of craving to be realized. Since suffering and its causes do not exist substantially, there is no mundane world to be transcended. 
Since the path and the extension of craving do not exist substantially, there is no transcendent world to be gained. This doesn't mean from Chiki's perspective that samsara and nirvana, nirvana are one and the same. Chiki would stipulate that they are neither one nor two, neither exactly the same nor separate. It's more appropriate to say that they are that their indivisibility means they can't exist without each other. In other words, we, we sometimes think of the samsaric cycle, the cycle that we live in, the cycle of, of that, is, that has uh, dukkha as one thing. Let's, let's extinguish that and we'll go on to nirvana. We, we can't. Samsara is the way it is. And nirvana is the way it is. They exist in relation to each other. And so there are times within the samsaric life in which you can attain nirvana. You can be free of dukkha. And there's times when you think you got it hacked, you got it. I got mine. Wham! It comes down and smacks you like a rock. <laughs> because they're really, they're not one and the same. But they're indivisible. Okay, so I'll, I'll leave it there. Again, otherwise, beyond perception, right? Beyond, beyond perception. perception. <laughs> beyond, just, beyond. beyond the beyond. Samsara is indivisible from nirvana. Um, and by the way, I forgot to mention: no extinguishing is to be realized as a denial of substantial interpretation of the third noble truth. The third noble truth is that there is a way that's out of this suffering. And that unwholesome desires must be extinguished. That's a substantial, a substantialist notion. Vipassana. There is purely the single true mark of reality as it is. There are no separate things outside the true mark. For things in themselves, dharma data, dharma mata, to be quiescent is called cessation. To be quiescent yet ever luminous is called contemplation. Contemplation is vipassana. This is the fourth and highest interpretation of Chigi's Four Noble Truths, namely the Four Noble Truths as spontaneous. I won't go into the other two. It's an expression of reality which is beyond conceptualization and verbal distinction. There is no difference between suffering, its causes, its extinction, and the path. As Swanson writes, all is one. Again, it is the meaning of the middle path. And Dharma Mata, just so you're aware of this, is the intrinsic nature of reality of phenomena as seen when according to the Mahayana, they have been freed from a perceiving subject and perceived objects, equivalent in meaning to suchness, tatata, or emptiness, shunyata. Okay, next. I know everybody's getting this really, I, I know you're getting it. <laughs> the looks on your face are just trying to fool me. <laughs> we are getting it, one way or another. <laughs> Perfect and sudden cessation and contemplation. Though earlier and later stages are spoken of they neither two are se nor separate. This is called perfect and sudden cessation and contemplation. We think of shamatha and vipassana as two types of meditation, first one, then the other. But they are in fact indivisible. They are intertwined and part of a larger whole. On the cushion, while walking, both sitting and walking, neither sitting nor walking, which is, of course, as I said before, our daily lives. Learning to be, learning to be the meditation rather than practicing meditation is Chiki's message. We start by opening our minds to what exists outside of ourselves, then seeing that what exists outside and inside are not separate. They are one and the same. And that's re a really important aspect of this. Conclusion. Next, please. So we see the world not as it is, but as we are. I think that simple sentence is a very apt way of summarizing what is the nature of reality. We see the world and we think that's reality. No, that's our reflection of reality. That's not what reality really is out there. It's our projections. Yeah. Uh, we think of the Shamat in Vipassana, I'm um, sorry, 
Uh, as mentioned at the top of the presentation, Endon Show has been studied and recited in East Asia for over 1,500 years. When read and recited on a regular basis, it's a reminder of the nature of reality, the meaning of the middle, Dharma Datu, the three dharmas, Shamata and Vipassana, the relevance of samsara and nirvana in our lives, and the intention of the perfect and sudden causation, cessation, and contemplation both on and off the cushion. And I want to offer my gratitude to Tiantai in China, especially Tendai in Japan, for making this remarkable teaching available to us on the 1217th anniversary uh, of the founding of the school on Mount Tia, Japan. And I hope this has provided insight into what we share with our Asian sisters and brothers. Yes. Hmm. Okay. So why don't we unmute people? We got time for just a, a one or two questions. I know that everybody understood everything that I was talking about, so there's probably no questions. But first, Ichishima Sensei, do you have any comments about the end on show since you introduced it to me uh thirty some odd years ago? Oh, thank you. Well, this Endon Show is uh, very popular among the uh, Japanese Tendai Buddhist priests. Uh, instead of uh, Hat Sutra, uh, we read it. Well, of course, both we read it, but uh, uh, Endon Show is very short, but that is uh, uh, very uh, representative of GE, Tendai, Chinese Tendai founder GE's uh, thought of Makashikan. And so, uh, this is uh, very short. If uh, you ha we have time, just uh, within three minutes, I can read it in Japanese. Is that okay? Sure, please. Go ahead, Sensei. Okay. <clears throat> Kien ジャカイチュショムドカシュ、ショジソクネハムメツカショムクムシュ、コムセケンムドムメツコムシュセケンジュイチジソジソゲキョムベポ、オショジャクネンミョシジャクニジョショミョカンスイモンショムニムベツ